serious? Welcome to our multi-part video series exploring the roles and representations of women in video games. This project will examine the tropes, plot devices, and patterns most commonly associated with women in gaming from a systemic, big-picture perspective. So, care to explain your particular brand of crazy? This series will include critical analysis of many beloved games and characters, but remember that it's both possible, and even necessary, to simultaneously enjoy media while also being critical of its more problematic or pernicious aspects. So, without further ado, let's jump right into The Damsel in Distress. Let's start with the story of a game that no one ever got to play. Back in 1999, game developer Rare was hard at work on a new original title for the Nintendo 64 called Dinosaur Planet. The game was to star a 16-year-old hero named Crystal as one of two playable protagonists. One of two playable protagonists. She was tasked with traveling through time, fighting prehistoric monsters with her magical staff, and saving the world. She was strong, she was capable, and she was heroic. She argues that strong, empowered female characters still aren't feminist because they're only pretending to be men. According to her, any woman in a TV show who shows strong leadership is only doing so in a charade of strictly masculine traits. Traits like violence. Here is her outline of TV's current state. It's difficult to tell whether this diagram represents her view of masculine and feminine traits or what she thinks other people believe in. Under any oppressive patriarchy, shyness, submissiveness, and cooperation would be positive feminine traits. But also under such a patriarchy, shyness and submissiveness would absolutely be placed as negative traits for men. Does she really believe that modern television has no room for negative masculine traits? Or does she believe that other people believe it? The second diagram illustrates what she wants TV to give her, once again, at odds with herself. Notably, she proposes significantly fewer positive feminine traits than positive male traits, with women hilariously unable to show confidence or self-control. Pretty cool, right? Well, it would have been, except the game never got released. As development on the project neared completion, legendary game designer Shigeru Miyamoto joked about how he thought it should be the third installment in his Star Fox franchise instead. Over the next two years, he and Nintendo did just that. They rewrote and redesigned the game and released it as Star Fox Adventures for the GameCube in 2002. In this revamped version, the would-be protagonist Crystal has been transformed into a damsel in distress and spends the vast majority of the game trapped inside a crystal prison, waiting to be rescued by the new hero, Fox McCloud. The in-game action sequences that were originally built for Crystal were converted to feature Fox instead. Crystal is given a skimpier, more sexualized outfit. Wow, she's beautiful. What am I doing? And yes, that is cheesy saxophone music playing to make sure it's crystal clear that she is now an object of desire, even while in suspended animation. My reflexes, my strength, even my looks, they're all designed to give me an edge. Through here. We're almost at the... Miranda, but you were... Dead? To add insult to injury, Fox is now using her magical staff to fight his way through the game to save her. Get me back! Hey! My staff! You're back!
The tale of how Crystal went from protagonist of her own epic adventure one of two playable protagonists. To the passive victim in someone else's game, illustrates how the damsel in distress trope disempowers female characters and robs them of the chance to be heroes in their own right. John McCain is an American soldier and politician who was imprisoned for over five years during the Vietnam War. After being shot down over Hanoi in 1967, he was captured and taken to the Hoa Lo Prison, also known as the Hanoi Hilton, where he would stay until 1973. He suffered regular sessions of brutal torture throughout his imprisonment, which left him unable to lift his arms over his head and caused his hair to turn prematurely gray. In 1968, he was offered early release for propaganda purposes, but refused to leave the prison until every man taken before him had been released as well. Laura Ling and Yuna Lee are two Asian-American journalists for Current TV who were arrested in 2009 for illegal entry into North Korea. They were convicted by the DPRK and sentenced to 12 years hard labor. Kim Jong-il eventually pardoned the women after meeting, the, meeting with former President Bill Clinton. The actions taken by North Korea in this matter were later defended by this asshole. Damian Eccles, Jesse Miskelly, and Charles Baldwin were arrested and wrongfully convicted of child murder in West Memphis, Arkansas. Miskelly and Baldwin were sentenced to life in prison while Eccles was sentenced to death. While in prison, Eccles suffered health problems that went untreated due to the state's apathy towards the health of death row inmates. After 18 years and overwhelming public support, all three were released in 2010 following new forensic evidence. Nelson Mandela is an anti-apartheid revolutionary who served 27 years of a life sentence for plans to overthrow the South African government. He was released in 1990 and went on to serve as the president of South Africa. Facing ever-increasing Nazi brutality, Anne Frank went into hiding with her family in 1942. The Frank family was hidden away in an attic for two years before being captured. Anne died in a concentration camp in 1945. Members of the Russian punk rock band Pussy Riot were arrested and jailed for a public protest in front of a church in Moscow. Two of the members are currently still imprisoned. Randy Blythe was arrested in Prague 2012 on manslaughter charges. He had allegedly pushed a fan off stage at a previous Slam of God show in Prague, inflicting injuries that resulted in the fan's death. Blythe spent five weeks in prison before being released on $400,000 bail. After his release, he made the bold move to face the charges head-on and return to Prague to stand trial. Though it was demonstrated that he had pushed the fan, he was acquitted of all charges, with the blame ultimately lying on the venue and its security. His bail money was returned. Being held captive did not deprive these people of the opportunity to be heroes in their own right. It made them heroes. Heroes don't need to go on noble quests or save damsels to earn that title. Indeed, people who are held captive unjustly face trials and tribulations that demand the most profound sense of inner strength imaginable. Many of those people carry the banner of their country, their cause, or their people in their hearts when they are imprisoned. Some are only able to keep their lives and sanity because of an inner fire of belief that the truth shall set them free. Such strength, courage, and conviction are the marks of heroes, and for holding on to those noble qualities, they achieve a level of heroism that Anita Sarkeesian cannot begin to fathom. Ideologues like Anita Sarkeesian reveal a gaping hole in the philosophy of modern feminist authoritarians. Though some philosophies designed to establish a sense of male identity carried with them lessons that could result in wrathful oppression of the weak and innocent, there were those that taught honor, courage, and respect, among other noble heroic traits. 
These are lessons which Anita Sarkeesian and those like her have either never learned or chosen to reject outright, substituting them with cold, heartless rhetoric that is nothing more than a pale and hollow substitute for a soul. I am, cert I am of the certainty that women are capable of being honorable, courageous, and respectful. But Anita Sarkeesian is not one of those women. She missed out on those value lessons somewhere, probably around the same time she scammed her viewers out of $160,000 in pity money. There is a common phrase among the political correctness police that goes, check your privilege. The implication is that the person against whom it is being leveled has just expressed a sentiment that is ignorant of the suffering of others and that the ignorance proceeds from the offender's privileged status in life as a result of race, gender, nationality, economic class, etc. You need to check your privilege, Anita. Only a sheltered, pampered, upper-middle-class princess such as yourself could make such a callous statement as... The tale of how Crystal went from protagonist of her own epic adventure to the passive victim in someone else's game illustrates how the damsel in distress trope disempowers female characters and robs them of the chance to be heroes in their own right. By uttering these disgustingly insensitive words, you have demonstrated that you are nothing more than a gas bag in an ivory tower who thinks that mindlessly intricate academic jargon is a substitute for a real, thorough, and deeply informed worldview that is grounded in real respect and real sympathy for your fellow human beings. So enjoy sitting in your posh bourgeois home, playing video games and spewing your diarrheic pop culture criticism into the minds, the voided minds, of your fellow hipster pseudo-activists. Just don't open the windows or part the curtains, lest the agonized screams of those filthy proles you claim to fight for should disturb your enjoyment of Borderlands 2. As a trope, the damsel in distress is a plot device in which a female character is placed in a perilous situation from which she cannot escape on her own and must be rescued by a male character. usually providing the core incentive or motivation for the protagonist's quest. In video games, this is most often accomplished via kidnapping, but it can also take the form of petrification or demon possession, for example. Traditionally, the woman in distress is a family member or a love interest of the hero, Princesses, wives, girlfriends, and sisters are all commonly used to fill the role. Of course, the damsel in distress predates the invention of video games by several thousand years.